Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the rundown. Hey, Brian. Uh, how how you doing? How's things on your end? Oh, you know, same old, same old. Uh, had a horrible migraine attack this week. Don't know what the fuck was going on with me, but say la vie, I guess. Say la vie is right. I'm sorry you had to deal with that. That sounds fucking annoying. It's let's okay. uh, got my let's, uh, skin back, so. Let's uh watch a thing I'm gonna do hickey to start, shall we? Just our uh, cold open. And I'm lagging because, of course, I'm lagging because Discord is such a shoddily made piece of software. I love it. Don't just love this. This is just fucking great. And we can't have nice things. Oh my. Cells, at least in their thinking, is actually weirdly, counterintuitively, quite reasonable. Because <laughs> incels are like, no one wants to fuck me. And then the world is like, yeah. <laughs> it's actually the dudes who are incels that go out and try every night that are the delusional ones. <laughs> Like, all right, I've been striking out 600 days in a row, but tonight is my night. I put on extra cologne, so I know that the ladies... <laughs> ladies will be all over me. <laughs> very funny. A yeah. very funny guy. Very funny indeed. I just... There's just a part of me on some level that just doesn't, you know... And and some of the comments were like we which were very funny to me were we're all just like women and like men with that with their head out of their ass like we tell them what's wrong they choose not to listen. Well, it's funny you brought this up. I was actually just watching a video uh, a little bit about this subject. Do you know, Evan, that we are now living in the future? Do you know why? Why? You oh wait! Oh wait! Up. Oh wait! Oh wait! Is it because are you talking about like motherfuckers using AI to like talk with people on Tinder? Well, AI women, right? But then there's this guy who actually created a coochie box. He actually made a coochie box. A what? A coochie box. What's so a coochie like, box? Pretty much a pocket pussy connected to the internet. And it's called the orifice. <laughs> okay, first of all, I think Pornhub already has like a pocket pussy that can like that like some high level porn stars have like had their shit modeled into, and you could like have that shit change, and they get a, and every time you use it, like they you get, they get like a piece of money or some shit. I don't fucking know. Like 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 that. I feel like I feel like if that's what they're using for that technology already exists. What is this open source or some shit? That because that would be uh, fucking creepy. Uh, I think it's somebody who like actually went into the uh like AI girlfriend esque experience and tried to like create an apparatus to go along with that. Uh, because like it's pretty much gamifying sex. <laughs> Dog, we are in the future. <laughs> in the future. Not the future I want to be in. Not the future I want to be in, but we are in the future. <laughs> I want I, Listen, people say, like, I wanted Star Trek, not Cyberpunk. Oh, for real? I can't get over this, yo. I really saw that today. It was like a, a video that they released, I would think, a week ago or a few days ago at least, but... I mean, I just don't like where we're headed. <laughs> nah. I want off of this bozo bus. I want off. <laughs> I heard. I I I heard a turn of somebody said, if you if, if I heard somebody say a great thing the other day that if you work for a wage, if you work if like if 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 the, if, if the if the money you earn comes in the form of a wage regardless of what you do you're a worker no matter how much that wage is and you yeah. are in, and you and you should and you should side with workers even if you have like even if you have the appearance of wealthy i mean i don't disagree mm -mm. 
I just I don't, don't know either. how that goes. <laughs> it 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 goes by just I think it, I mean it's like I feel like you know especially with you know Tesla, uh, uh, Amazon, uh, Trader Joe's, and a bunch of other uh, conglomerates that were trying to like sue the government under the under the guise that the NLRB is not constitutional. Uh, you know the the one thing that like you like I think they forget that the NLRB exists to protect them. The NLRB doesn't Megan. exist to protect workers. The NLRB exists to protect companies because you because originally, originally, um, you know, y- like this, the NLRB was the compromise. Because what used to happen with unions and union workers is they would come to your house, drag you out by your hair, and beat you half to death in front of your wife and children. And they were like, uh, we can't keep having this happen, but we also can't keep yeah, letting po- politicians, children die. Poli- and- politicians didn't like that their friends kept getting beaten half to death or d- to death by work- their, by abuse workers who, by the way, were also voting constituents. So if they so they ha- so they basically were in a, between a rock and a hard place. And so their solution was this middle ground. If they try and get rid of the NLRB and get rid of that middle ground, eventually, Amazon workers are just going to light the fucking warehouse on fire. And then probably violently beat the shit out of their managers. And we live in the internet age. Like, uh, Jeff Bezos' address is public. Mm -hmm. Like his multiple addresses are all public. <laughs> yeah, and so it's like all you need is like some workers from some nearby city to just say, fuck it, we're gonna get in our Honda shit boxes and light that bitch on fire. He they just gotta be right about one of them, and Bezos is cooked, quite literally. So yeah. You know, and so that's that's also what surprises me about these billionaires not wanting to create any type of protection because it's also protection for for themselves. Yeah. It's like, hey, if you're not having people eat fucking cat food when they're 60, 70 years old, you have nobody who's planning on creating a, uh, you know, a rebellion. <laughs> yeah, it's like you, you, you there, you, they, there, America is very, like, the problem with is, is that our generation very much is not culturally the same as the previous generation. You know, and when I say the previous generation, I'm not talking about the millennials because you and I are Gen Z. I'm talking about Gen X and the boomers. Like I, I applied to Staples yesterday, and I had two interviews, and I'm going to see on Monday whether or not I got a job there. But you do not have one tenth of the allegiance to Staples that somebody who would be in the baby boomer or Gen X uh, generation would, because Absolutely if not. you talk. If you talk to one of them, they would say to you, Staples is the greatest job ever, and if I don't get the job, then I'll go work somewhere else, but if I do get the job, then I'm going to make sure I climb up the corporate ladder and I pull myself up by the bootstraps. Trust me, I know. <laughs> yeah, dog, I was in there waiting for my interview in the in the fucking office area section where they sell like cheap-ass chairs and desks and shit, and I was just like standing there on my phone waiting, and some a Gen X man came up and says, do you work here? And I'm like, no, nah, no, I got, I, hopefully I got an interview today. I'm waiting for my interview. And he's like, oh, well then this will be, then this will be some great practice for you. So I'm looking for X, Y, and Z, the, 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 and I'm like, sir, I don't work Genuinely here. I, I, I don't I know don't anything. Know. <laughs> and, he's, and then and he doubles down and says, oh, well you should, well you should, because this would be good practice for you and keeps going. And I'm like, so I, I don't know where any of that is. <laughs> And then he got like kind of snippy with me as like, oh, okay, and then just walked off. Yeah, at least it ended somewhat cordial. <laughs> I had three, I was in that, I was in there within 20 minutes of me being in there waiting for my interview. Three people over the age of 50 came up to me unprompted asking me where shit was. Well, you do give stables worker. I'm not, I, they're not wrong on the vibe. 
<laughs> no, you're not wrong. They're not wrong on the vibe. But, you know, even then, I will say that at the end of the day, I, you know, my thing is, is that, like, I've real. I'm starting to, I, I saw, I heard somebody on TikTok have a really excellent take the other day, and it was, and it was kind of funny for me. It's like, it was it, it kind of like, it's one, there's many reasons why it's difficult for me to find an entry-level programming job. Um, and some are outside of my control, some of them are within my control, some of them are just because the market sucks. But one of them that I thought was really interesting was something I pointed out that is very uh, true on, you know, in regards to, fuck you, Windows, I hate you. Um, one of the things that I uh, have, have found is uh, that they, when looking for cor corporate positions, want a Gen X or a Boomer. They want someone who's a Gen X or a Boomer, and they want and e and even if I even if I have over like almost a decade of experience, they want and and I'm looking for an entry level position. Despite all that, they still want a Gen X or a Boomer. And then the bullshit is, if you ever do get that job and you're not a Gen X or a Boomer, even if you were, you still gotta fucking uh, what's it called? Do training for the job. What's the point? I don't understand that. <laughs> I is an entry I, level position supposed to be entry level? What is this bullshit? Entry Especially level. since you have the fucking you have the certification, you have the fucking college major that actually shows the shit that you went into the fucking school to learn. I I have a technical certificate from the Europe program, but good point. Um, I, I and you want to know where fucking this originates? Do you, do you want to know where the, the, the where this originates from, by the way? It originates from the 08 housing crisis, where the economy was so bad, and you had tons of people, blue co like white-collar workers, who like all lost their fucking jobs, and all a bunch of companies went under. And so what you end up having is you have very experienced individuals with 10, 15, 20 years of, sometimes 20 years of experience, doing asking for jobs that are significantly lower than what they would have gotten before the 08 housing crisis. And what was it? I'm well, sorry to interrupt, but just like uh, when you're over, like why somebody with a college uh, master degree doesn't fucking apply for a manager position at uh, McDonald's. What's that phenomenon called where you're over? Over you're like overqualified. There we go. It, it, doesn't that happen at these fucking higher up positions at a certain point? If you're an entry level person, but you've been working in accounting or fucking business for 20 plus years, shouldn't you be considered a senior associate at that point? Or at least you should be considering senior associate positions? That's well, so uh, so the point the point is is you no know, no, you make a good point, and I'll get to that in a second, but what a, the rep thing is in the aftermath of the 08 crisis uh, housing crisis where where the economy was fucked and jobs there there's plenty of demand for jobs but not enough people were who should have been paid a lot more were lowballing and so what happened is is that a lot of corporate america got really used to qu high quality individuals working lower wage jobs and doing things that were like very much like not of their pay scale. And the problem is, is, is that even as the economy uprighted itself, those expectations didn't change because they really, really, really liked the idea of somebody of 5, 10, 15 years of experience coming in to be a middle, mid level developer. Well, I like, uh, I, I'm, um... I'm, I'm, I, sh people are asking me, like, I'm, a, I, I think. Confidence wise, with my skills, I'm a junior level developer. The problem is, is, is that they want for my, a junior level, they want five years of experience. A lot of these jobs, they want five years of experience in a corporate like setting, about just for a junior level. Junior level is entry level, by the way. Now, pause very quickly. I want to preference this because this is going to be weird to say. Okay. Okay. I do, uh, Jordan Peterson, trust me. Trust me, bear I'm giving, with me. I'm, I'm giving you. I'm giving you a chance. Jordan Peterson okay. is a kook, but I'm. But like, I I trust you on the psychology end of things, where he actually has you know intelligence on, where he's right. actually smart and not talking about society, but psychologically still debatable. But continue psychologically. I think he was right when he said that people 
tend to lack conscientiousness in these types of jobs, especially corporate S jobs, because I think you kind of get bogged down into the mundane day to day tasks of whatever job that fits that description. And then you don't really feel like you're valued enough to go get a raise or go get a, a increase in pay. And I think that point is very, very true. I think that's true. I just, I, I'm kind of at a point in my life professionally Trust where I'm me. just like, I, I, res I, I only stay at a place for the people. You know, I, 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 I stayed at JP Morgan Chase for as long as I, I wanted to leave a, a lot, but the only reason I stayed as long as I did is I, you know, even though I felt like there were gaps in my learning and I wasn't given the space I needed to learn, the things I was learning were incredible and they were from higher level programmers better than myself. And I didn't want to go away from that necessarily. So, you know, I, the, I loved the people I worked with. I just, it just, it just, it just wasn't, you know, it was just, well, that's here. exactly what the fuck I say about uh, the school I was going to. I hated the faculty, the admin administration side, but I loved the teachers. I loved what I was being taught. So that's why I never talk shit on the school fully, but I will talk shit all day on the admin side. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just bean counting. But, um, yeah. Yeah, no, it's just so, but like, yeah, like the whole, the, there's the, the, the issue with like the job market right now is it, it, if we're not talking about industry specific things, uh, it's, it's a combination of not wanting to pay, wanting to run a skeleton crew as much as possible. Um, it is a, it is that, it is, uh, the, it is just, I just, it's just the fucking price gouging, man. It's just, <sighs> you know, me and Meadow have to be out of this apartment, out of this apartment, this house, you know, by like damn near a month from now. Like I need to get, I need a job and I need to start working, you know, and so I can rock, knock, you know, some payout in May. It's just difficult. It's just hard. I feel you, man. It's just hard. It's, no, it's I get hard. it. It's hard, and it's it's just I, and this is me being vulnerable for a second. It's just I. Worked so hard to get at a point where I could have money and do what I want with it and have fun. I worked. I've spent years learning how to do the what I know how to do, and I just cannot get a fucking job in it for the life of me. I'm gonna probably hit up UPro and um, get some alumni help and see if I can beg them for like, hey, listen, I got terminated from. JP Morgan because nobody in the nobody at the fucking office, you know, wears a mask. Nobody at the fucking office like watches their fucking none of the fucking men wash their hands when they leave the goddamn bathroom. You know, and so it's it disgusting and I got sick like every two weeks like clockwork at like I got I we got COVID over Christmas. I got sick every two weeks like clockwork after that. All the way until March, and at that point, I'm like, I'm not fucking coming into the office if I can avoid it, and I don't know. It's just stressful. It's just stressful, and it's just I, you know, it's I don't know how you guys are living in fucking L at like Los Angeles and like with with the cost of fucking living. Like the cost of living here in Delaware has gone up significantly since you've been gone. You know, oh, I can Met imagine. Meadow wanted to move to Philly. We're just not going to be able to afford it. And it sucks, because that's probably where most more of the opportunities are, if we're being perfectly fucking honest. Yeah, but also, Meadow does have her car. Philly isn't that no, far away. she doesn't have a car. She doesn't? She doesn't uh, have a car. Do you, do you want to hear... Do you, you, wait, you don't, you, you don't know Meadow lost her car, didn't you? Yeah, no. You don't tell oh me. Oh my god, this story, my brother in Christ, this story. What happened? Buckle the fuck up. 
Okay. So you know Meadow had that cute little green, lime green thing, right? Mm. Okay. So that, the su- summer of 2022, she's staying here. She was planning on working the whole summer, banking some money. Mm. That didn't happen. You want to know why it didn't happen? The fucking alternator belt on her, on her, um, uh, on her car, crap, like snapped. Okay. And so she had to wait to get a new one. She sent it to the fucking mechanics place. They took, when I tell you that these mechanic fuckers took two months. Two? She had her car a week. She had her car a fucking week. In two months, they didn't have that shit. We were creeping up on when she was supposed to go back. And then she gets a call from them and says, basically, the car's fucked. It costs more to re- it would cost more to replace the engine than it would have to replace to get to buy a new, whole new car. And so what happens is that I want to remind you that this car is her freedom. This car was allowed her to leave a house that she just didn't feel comfortable in or safe in, and this was her freedom. This was her ability to leave. Mm-hmm. It was her like she she's it was her it was I think her uh, I think it was the, her, the first car she bought herself. Like she loves it. She loved it. It was her little green bullet. Trashed. So, her grandfather comes through. God bless this man. Good man. Mm. This man, his wife had been dead for about a year, and gives and lends and Meadow her grandma's car. Her grandma's car is a Mercedes. A custom Mercedes. Low rider, wooden steering wheel, varnish, little nice ornate clock on the dash, heated steering wheels, heated seats, like the perfect old lady car. Mm. Gorgeous. Matte black, one with a, with a sheen. Wonderful. Very thirsty. A very thirsty car. Gas yes. Very much. I I I how I I hey I how I was go I was paying for a good chunk of the gas on her way to sh- get to Chicago. I know you were crying. <laughs> it was bad. Like me and Meadow were crying. Both of us went like we went broke trying to pay for that shit. Oh. Um. So what ended up happening is. Wasn't no thirty dollars to get to New York and back, huh? <laughs> nah, it was not. It was thirsty, <laughs> like stopping multiple times in a day. Thirsty. Uh, um. So, and you've done the ride from you know Delaware to Chicago, so you know it's like it's a solid, it's a solid twelve hours. Mm-hmm. So, low. So one day, Meadow is um. You know, Meadow is, uh, you know, about to, uh, you know, it's typical Sunday. Her, Viva, her roommate would go to, um, you know, they'd, they'd take the car, they go to Trader Joe's, they go to the Asian market, they go to the, they go to the Aldi's, they get all the groceries for the week as cheaply as possible. Normal stuff, right? Everyone carpools, go. Except. It's not there. I want to remind you that this car was a drivable shrine to her dead grandmother who died of COVID a year prior. I believe it. I could imagine. Probably wasn't touched. <laughs> Not he, he, he just he just didn't want to touch. He just made sure it was okay. He just didn't want to. It's not there. It's been two weeks since they last went to the grocery store. Somebody stole that car, huh? They found it in a crumpled uh, ditch. It, it, they found it in a crumpled heap in a ditch in in Montana. What the three fuck? S- three states away? <laughs> what? That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. So. Needless to say, 
that it was particularly hard on Meadow because her grandfather had said, it, it like was actually he, he when he when he found out about this and like because the, the insurance and all that and she had to call him and call the insurance and he got the money back on the car like all some of the money back on the car. He was like, I'm really upset about it, and and she's like, I know, I'm so sorry. She's like, No, I was gonna give this to you at Christmas so you would have a car for yourself forever. And and I and 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 I and and now we're just like I'm. We're going. Hopefully, I I get my tax return, and it's as much as it says it is, and we're probably gonna use most of that for a fucking car. Damn. Damn. So yeah. So we've been stuck. So so when I, so we're our our capital S stuck in this house. Thank God our roommate is is a love bug and lets us use her car. And the and as long and you know, Meadow will drive will wake up, drive her to work, go back and pick her up, so she'll have a car for the day. It's, it's especially important since Meadow has fucking PT. So it's just you know we're just it's a lot. It's insane. Uh, oh Lord, what's going on with you? Uh, let's see. Starting my own podcast. Check that out when it's released. It's called Shakes and Discourse. It'll eventually be out. I'll let y'all know. We're still developing shit but uh aside from that oh they just released the fallout for next gen update not sure if you knew about that but, i did yeah uh, ultra it widescreen did. and widescreen mode uh you know the usual just smoking chilling bme also i'm looking to get a job at a smoke shop so that'd be cool that's right up your fucking alley also i think my federal deposit just hit hey good shit yeah so you know, that's a little bit, that's a, that's much more helpful. We're going to cash that out. Standard on Tuesday. Now we just have to wait for my state refund. That'll be soon, too. So you shouldn't have to wait too long. I shouldn't, but. At, le- at, the, very, um, at the very least, I told, Me- I, I told Meadow, like, hey, listen. I want to say five hundred dollars for me to be able to like you know have set have my phone bill set up and everything else. Also, I need to buy the Gold Road for the new Elder Scrolls expansion that's coming out, and I also need to buy the Shadow of the Urchard DLC. Which, if I'm being honest, I should probably do right. Probably do right now. Cause I don't know when I'm gonna have money again. Cause I'm poor and, and shit. Ugh. Aside from stables, where else are you applying? Shop right a lot. It like, just places within walking distance. Like if it's within a mile of here, I can walk to it and be there within like fifteen twenty minutes, easy peasy. That's Hello, good. Momo. Are you coming to say hi to Brian? No, you cannot escape me. I will use you for content. What's up, kitty? He's Hello, a little kitty. man. He's a kitty. He's a big man. He's like, please, please, please. He's, he's, he's like, please free me. I'm like, I love you. You're my son. And I love you very much. I give you big hugs. I'm not sure if you can see back there, but there's... I can see, I can see a void on the couch, yeah. Yeah. Yep. He's he's there, just passed out. He loves to sit on my goddamn lap when I'm playing fucking games. <laughs> yeah, I mean, is that a problem? It's it's bad no, for me. For not. for me, it's like they like to nudge my hands when I'm playing on on my computer. It's mm-hmm. cute. I like it. Are you gonna play Elden Ring? Probably not. I mean, I. I am in love with AC6, don't get me wrong, but it is not the same game, and that's for sure. <laughs> no, for sure. But it is just that, I will say, uh, I don't know. There's a new game that I'm going to be playing, it's called Another Crab's Treasure. It's a, it's a, it's a souls borny game that I've seen, that I've been actually waiting for it to come out for years at this point. Uh, and it released wow. yesterday, so I'm going to probably do a live stream of it uh, tonight at some point. Um, or this weekend, and that should be fun. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's 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 uh, that your souls are microplastics in the ocean. Ah, uh, 
yeah, it's 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 it's, it's, a, it's a sweet little game. I'm excited to give it a shot. Um, ha- what a... have what have you have you uh been playing um any uh, any Fallout games besides four lately? Because I know that after the Fallout show, you've been probably unlocking that hyperfixation a little bit. I want to get into modding uh, Fallout New Vegas and Fallout 3 together to make, what is it, A Tale of Two Ways? Oh, you saw that is video. That yeah. I want to do that. But I like, I, like, like, I like that you watch my videos from time to time. I think I saw the IG one. I think IGN one. I think they did a uh, video. Um, it's honest, honest to God, it's just on the uh, Tale of Two Wastelands forum. And um, here it's the uh, it's uh, it's it's kind of a, a bit of a blast from the past in a certain way, in a way that's like honestly I kind of uh, like um, I enjoy it. I think it's uh, here I just uh, texted it to you by the way. Um, okay, cool. But uh, yeah, no, it's got the uh, installation instructions there for you. Um, honest, honest to God, honest to God. It's li- for, it's it's literally as simple as like downloading Fallout Three, Fallout downloading Fallout New Vegas, downloading the uh, installer, and then just pointing to the two games data folders and letting the installer do its thing. What I wanted to ask was, does it matter if I have it on uh, Steam or Epic Game Store? Does that matter? It shouldn't matter in the slightest. Okay, just as long as I own the full the game of the year editions of both, right? Right. Game of the year editions or all the DLC. Game of the year editions are preferred. Yep. Cool. Because uh, I'm not sure if you know, but yo, one thing I got to say, Epic Game Store, say what you want about their data sharing, whatever, but those fucking free games come in clutch. Sometimes. Other times they're trash, but they come in clutch sometimes. That's what the Microsoft, that's what the game passes for us. Like, yeah, but I like being able to actually like own it. Like I, I get with don't get yeah. me wrong with Game Pass and yeah. PlayStation Premium. I like having the you know pay fifteen, pay seventeen, boom, you have it. You could even stream the shit. I just like being able to say, nope, this is mine. If I take my console off fucking online, then I could still have it, no question. Yeah, I've I've personally have been kind of like getting mildly into the idea of cracked version, owning cracked versions of games, so I can like just keep them in a folder forever from in perpetuity personally you know it's just i think it's just i want to i don't know there's a part of me that wants to like archive stuff in like a in like a in like goblin mode just because of how awful people like nintendo have been recently speaking of yeah. which did, did you hear about that their their uh copyright strike to gary's mod what really yeah, so apparently Nintendo sent copyright cease and desists to the to Gary, the Gary's to the Gary's mod, the one dude who man, who manages and updates Gary's mod, and says, "Hey, we got a bunch of Nintendo stuff on your on the Steam Workshop. Get fucking rid of it." And he basically put out a thing that says, "Hey, um, we got to go through twenty years of of content y'all have made." On one of the most user generated centric video games on Valve's platform, can y'all just do us a favor and like take it down if you can and not upload okay. it again, please? Here's my fucking question for you goddamn Nintendo fanboys. At what point are they gonna do something where y'all finally turn their fucking your fucking backs on them? Nothing. It's a cult. It's a cult. It's a cult. And, and here's the thing. I'm in love with certain Nintendo IPs. I love Nintendo no, products, I, but I'm not like, saying no, 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 not even for them to go strictly software. Oh, oh I'm you're just talking, the, you're talking for, the dick riders. For y'all to take a, for y'all to take a fucking stand and be like Nintendo, y'all are doing the fuck too much. Y'all are doing the most. Y'all are doing way too much. We got to pull it back just a little bit. Cause come the fuck on. <laughs> Because also, it's not even like that fucking guy put it in the game. If he himself put it in the game, I'd be like, okay, I get it. But there's no fucking way he did. Over 20, over like 25 years, that's how long fucking Gary Mod has been around. It's it's insane. It's insane. It's insane. That... It is. You know, uh... But, 
But you bitches won't ever fucking turn your goddamn backs on them because they got fucking Mario and fucking Pokemon and fucking Kirby and fucking all this shit. And you motherfuckers will never do it. And I know it's more Legend of Zelda and shit like that and Brawl and fucking Super Smash Brothers and shit. I get it. I, get, I know which one, which games you fuckers like. But goddamn, at a certain goddamn point, can we fucking call, can we call things things? <laughs> call a spade a spade. Exactly. I mean, goddamn. <laughs> yeah. Did you see that picture of uh, uh, Elon Musk at the uh, Fallout premiere? No. <laughs> oh, my brother in Christ. I know. He looked out of fucking place. <laughs> like, like, I want to show you the fucking picture. Nobody. Like, this picture just looks like nobody fucking like, wanted him there. I believe that. Also, it's Amazon. Why the fuck is he there? He's fucking Cloud Shark. Like, look at this fucking photo, dude. Like, <laughs> look at Todd Howard's face, bro. Oh, he's like, like, why the fuck is he here? Why is he here? <laughs> like, nobody. Like, look at this motherfucker. He's like, yo, should I should I deck him in the back of the head for the vine? There's not one person smiling. <laughs> no, everybody looks uncomfortable that he's there. <laughs> Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Uh, look at like look at somebody had the the close up on uh like on Todd like yo get your ass out of here now before this Jackie Coke has me acting the most. <laughs> yo, for real, and you don't want to go against fucking Todd, not him. Nah, Todd Howard gives me, like, Derek Shepard from Grey's Anatomy vibes, who's, like, mad chill, like, super PC, like, 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 loves peace, super, like, nice, but then, like, the moment he's put over the edge, he just, like, <laughs> like, out of nowhere. Nah, because I was watching Grey's Anatomy with Meadow today, and we got to the scene where, like, Derek wasn't able to save the, pre wasn't able to save the pregnant woman's life or whatever, and, like, he had, he took out two parts of her brain or whatever, and he was just, like, overwhelmed, and then Sloane comes up to him and says, by the way, like, I know you told me not to do it, but me and Lexi are dating and we're happy. And as, like, this man is, like, like, Derek is, like, hanging over the edge, like, like, like just, like, trying to deal with his feelings, he's like, <laughs> and then Sloane's like, you know what? I deserve that. Actually, no, I didn't deserve that. I'm happy with her, and and then and then he's like, up again, and he's like, you know what? Fuck it, I'm gonna punch you back. <laughs> and they just start roughing and tumbling. It's funny as shit. I love white woman One Piece. I can tell. I love white woman, and honestly, I arguably I want to get into normal One Piece, but I feel like I need to finish Grey's Anatomy first. I wish one of your viewers were here who actually watches One Piece just to hear you say that. I would just love to know what they think. <laughs> well, you know what? If you want to if you want to light a fire on some people's ass, when this video goes live on YouTube, you can just share the timestamp at three minutes at, at, at 38 minutes at the 38 minute mark where I say that shit and then just like so that that's the shit that they see and it'd be my fucking guess. I'm still oh, a tight I'm still a small YouTuber. Nobody's gonna see this shit. They need <laughs> to. I, I wish you already had millions of fans so everybody could expose you for knowing your fucking mics. Dog, I, dog, if I had a billion if I had a million subs right now and had the money and income with that shit, I would fucking delete most of my fucking backlog because I know that I've been an unhinged jackass for most of my time. And it doesn't matter that I'm a changed person now or I've learned how to express my personal opinions better in ways that are more healthy. There's a reason you don't see Moist Critical's early stream days. True. That's just curated. I don't know. I think everybody should keep their old shit, unless it's, like, extremely fucking racist. <laughs> oh, oh, God, no. I'm, that, that, that's one thing I haven't done. I, I will say, like... I, I, you know, have, were, have there probably been moments in my time online where I was, like, not as informed about certain things as I am now? Sure, but I can look back at things. I'm like, I think the Philip DeFranco route to it, where it's like, leave it up or whatever, like, 
I'm, I don't believe that now. I, you know, didn't believe it then. And I want to be an example of how you can grow and become a better fucking human being. True. You know, you know who dodged a bullet with all that shit? Blackface? Who? Fucking who? Uh, Jimmy Fallon and Kimmel. They both did it. Like, they both really did it. <laughs> <laughs> I I like to believe Anthony Jeselnik full full like full frontal that like Jimmy Fallon is like a unrepentant like like barely managing alcoholic. Oh shit. Did you hear about is it Prank Island or some shit like that? Uh it was Johnny Knoxville, uh Eric Andre and the girl from Precious and they would take people who would uh you know uh Wait, pose When you say girl from Precious, do you mean Monique? The black woman from Precious, the girl, the main character. Oh, the person who played Precious, not her mom. Yes. Okay. No, not her mom. Yeah. Sorry, I always say Precious thinking that it's the main character. I think it is. I don't know. I haven't seen it. Whatever. You know who I'm talking about. They take people randomly who will like pitch to them prank ideas. And it was a horrible fucking show, supposedly. It like already came out last year. And uh, there was this one prank where this gay couple and one of the gay guys comes out with a family and like you see this man sitting next to this guy who he now thinks has a whole family behind his back and he's crushed like it's just pure evil it's not even funny my man is just sitting on the couch destroyed he's like is this really your son? And the whole time, the, the the guy who's trying to play it off is trying to play it off and being like, look how cute my son is. Isn't he amazing? He's gorgeous. And then finally it comes out that it's a prank and he's like, I'm still leaving you. <laughs> nah, because here's the thing. That's the type of shit. Like, and here's the thing. That sounds par for the course for Eric Andre. That's kind of off brand for Johnny Knoxville. Well, like, even with Eric Andre, everybody that goes on that show, like, knows what the fuck is happening, unless he's doing the skit stuff outside in public. Then nobody knows what the fuck is going on. But, like, 90% of the time when it's actually the people involved, they know what's going on. This is a weird fucking show. I know what I'm getting myself into. And it's like, These and, are just and, and random also, people. And also, <laughs> don't match Eric's energy. He will, he has less shame than you. Oh, and also, supposedly, Eric Andre was like, dog, get me off of this fucking show because Johnny Knoxville kept tasing him the whole time. <laughs> you know what? How can you be bad at that? Like, listen, I understand, like, you want to, like, I understand, I don't want, I'm not mad at Johnny for, like, I want to stop being tased, but I ain't mad that it's happening. No, I will say, like, he would, like, Eric Andre would squirt him with a fucking, like, squirt gun. And then he would whole ass tase him. Like, <laughs> you gotta remember that Johnny Knoxville he did four jackass movies. No, he I did, know. I know. Like, His sense like, of humor like, is it, fucked. It, like, uh, that's not the question. He's, he's <laughs> like, like, if it was anybody else, that would be assault. <laughs> probably. Probably. I've yeah. never been tased. I don't want to be tased. Uh, yeah, fuck you. I I don't think I've ever been tased either. Or but yeah, like like I the, the idea of Eric Andre being like, "Yo, give me the fuck off this show." <laughs> Johnny Knoxville keeps tasing me, and he's my hero, so I can't beat his ass. See, I think I think after like the third or fourth one where it wasn't supposed to be on me anymore, I would just start fighting. I would be like, fuck it, Johnny, let's go. Let's go. Fuck like, it. We're like we're like this, like we're not even like filming this backrooms shit. Like you're just doing this for fun. <laughs> and like, I gotta beat your ass on principle. Just on principle. <laughs> well, no, the thing is is that like Eric Andre also knows that if he presses charges against Johnny Knoxville for being tased. Everybody's all his like every, you're a all, bitch. <laughs> you're a bitch. All his like he's Eric fucking Andre. Like you gotta like like that's that's a rough place to be in. Oh, also, I do just want to tell you one uh show that I think you would love. Watch the fucking Regs. That's a great show. That's a good show. 
Do you like me to? It's on uh, YouTube. Oh, cool. I need to still watch Hell of a Boss. It's all on YouTube. I still haven't watched it. What is it? It's uh, by Vizzy Pop. It's the same person who did Has Been Hotel. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I got to be so honest. Wish I was more into it because Keith David is in it. Not wish I was. I, uh... I, I dug it a lot. I, I thought I and Brandon uh, Rogers. You knew you knew that, right? Yeah, yeah. Brandon Rogers is great. I liked uh, I liked it. Um, here's the thing, right? I approached it from a pers- a perspective of this is not written for me personally, but the music, the score. And the quality of the animation, I think, was enough for me to, like, kind of get really interested in it. Like, I like it. I like it a lot for, like, the music. I like the, uh, I like a lot of the characters and the, and the writing of, around it and, 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 and the premise. Um, you know, it's just, on some level, it's a little too, it, it is, it does have that, like, 2014, 2015 Tumblr vibe to it, which is not my bag. But very much so. But outside of that, and the other things surrounding it, I liked it a lot. I thought it was great. I, I liked the music. I as, as like is a. I'm gonna be really honest. Musician in I the past, also, I liked it. I think also the fact that Noelle and Ellen were as obsessed with it as they were definitely made me even reject further. <laughs> yeah, no, I, 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 I kind of get that. I will say, like, not that it's bad. Again, I no, it's just no, it's, it's, I, I think, I think it's definitely like. For me, it's like when season two eventually comes out, I'm probably gonna watch it. Like, you know, because like, I, you know, I say what I like. Do you disagree with me when you when I say like, music and score is generally pretty damn good. The animations, oh, yeah, like... animation's pretty damn good. Most of the characters are like intriguing enough, and like they're in you know, in, like in regards the story, whatever. Sure, I'm not I'm not super sold on it on some level. It's more of just like I think. What what draws me to the show is more so the character character writing for certain characters, the music, the animation, you know, and the fact that this was you know a YouTube project originally, which I like a lot. Hold on, Meta's calling me. Uh, we were talking about. Uh, I, I was the last thing I said was is um yeah, and the other thing I like about it is the idea that it started on YouTube. Pilot was mm-hmm. on YouTube. Granted, do, I do a part of me does feel maybe you should watch the pilot before you watch the show because some things are a little better explained if I if I'm being honest. And I definitely think that they wrote the first episode of the show with the expectation that most of the people watching watched the pilot on YouTube. Makes sense. Yeah, but yeah. I uh I'm currently watching the Book of Boba Fett. I thought that was a pretty good series. I thought I... so too. I will. I will say I do know that a lot of, and I'm gonna probably do like a independent podcast where I talk about this at length myself. But just the cliff notes is I do understand where some of the diehard fans were coming from in regards to why they didn't like it. I, there's not enough shit going on to justify a full series, let alone. Uh, is it only one season? Only one season. Yeah, like there wasn't enough. Nobody cares enough about the politics of Mos Eisley to care about. Oh, Boba Fett's in in charge of this now. Awesome. I you know, he's also he's supposed to be the Damio of Tatooine, the entire planet. Yeah, but you gotta understand, in the grand scheme of shit, probably never going back to Tatooine again. I would be very surprised if you see anything with Boba Fett ever again, because his story is finished. There's yeah, nothing and, more than and, and we'll hear, we'll hear, well, here's the thing. I think that this is the send-off that needed to happen. I think what it, here's what I think, right? I think that the book of Boba Fett is a supplemental a uh, uh, piece of the Mandalorian. And they wanted to tell the story of Boba Fett, but they wanted to give it more time and deference than, you know, just like the little side things going on. They didn't want Mando to be the focus, which honestly, I support. I genuinely do think that the book of, well, I'm not finished with it yet, so I can't say this with with certainty just yet. Um, 
I think the biggest problem that people had with it, and they, this is something that they just don't want to admit, or they do, if they do admit they're really salty about it, is that Boba Fett, especially in the first few episodes when we're doing the flashbacks to when he's with the Tuscans, um, and he just doesn't feel like the badass they painted him as in their minds. Because you have to remember that the way people thought about Boba Fett for years was as of this like terrifying badass um, bounty hunter who like who was like one of the best in the field, and that this was like this lore that was like built up and about him in their minds, and this was reflected in the legacy content as well. He's like this legendary bounty hunter. And, you know, with the big Disney retcon that happened and the fact that, like, you know, there's changes and shit. He he wasn't portrayed as, like, this uber-confident, super, like, like he doesn't feel as, like, like, he feel, like, people probably felt on some level that Mando, being the super-competent, like, powerful, you know, warrior, is what Boba Fett should have been. Which... I get it, but also... But where the series is in the canon is not supposed to show him being a badass. It's supposed to show him surviving the Sarlacc pit, surviving, you know, getting fucked up from the Sarlacc pit, living with the Raiders, and then becoming the whatever it is at Tatooine. My it, 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 it's showing the end of his story. It's showing the, I'm not a young guy anymore. I'm trying to secure my future and and and, and get my peace. I'm trying to well, settle the fuck down. For the people who made the argument that it, he wasn't badass enough in the series, I feel like that point is null and void. My point of saying that it doesn't really serve any purpose is because my whole thing about Star Wars is why I find perfect example why i found ahsoka to be so interesting is because they actually took more than one uh you know uh format of telling the story with the clone wars and the actual movies included you know, crafting the story in between ahsoka and anakin living through the clone wars getting through it her actually becoming a jedi and then being like nah actually i don't agree with the jedi order i'm gonna go find my own path I like those types of shows because it actually expounds upon the story. When a non sequitur happens, like what's going on with Boba Fett in the book of, in with Boba Fett, my thing is not necessarily that I don't like it. I just don't necessarily see the uh, value of it if nothing ever comes back. That's my only thing. And it's, I get what you're saying. You're I, like, I, yeah, go, I will say it's the difference between macro and micro s- storytelling. And here's what I mean. The macro is this connects to this, connects to this, connects to this. And it, it, this affects the wider story there. It's like, let's take something like the blacklist, for example. Have you seen the blacklist? No. Okay. Uh, let's take the Sopranos then, which might be something a little more. There is the A plot and the B plot. Oh. The, 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 you have the A plot, which is what the fuck's going on in the episode, and you have the B plot, which is what's going on for the entire season or over multiple seasons. Uh, Boba Fett is... Boba Fett's story is A plot. There are some B plot things there. Mando's story is... like You, you, know, you do need to watch Book of Boba Fett before Mandalorian Season 3 because there's some pertinent things in there. You know, blah, 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 blah. You know, there's B there's B plot in there, but the B plot doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the story directly being told, per se. It's it's explanation as to why, you know, Mando is helping them with the Pike Syndicate and stuff. I haven't I haven't gotten further than that, so don't say anything. If you So just so you understand how I see this, I see yeah. the book of Boba Fett as being the episodes in The Sopranos where uh, Anthony is tripping in the in the desert and he doesn't and he's having all those dreams and Carmine fucking comes back and he's still alive and he's talking to him through the wall or when Anthony got shot. I'm not going to go into more spoilers just in case somebody hasn't seen it, but. 
you know, he has that whole fucking thing in the hospital where he thinks he's inside the room, all that. That's how I see Book of Boba Fett. Because I'm like, hey, I get it. You're explaining. But I also have to say, haven't watched Mandalorian at all. I don't really have any interest in it. I can't tell you why. It seems very interesting. I just, for the Star Wars story, I don't want to watch it. Can't tell you why. Not against the idea of the character. I just don't think I find value in it as of yet. But yeah, I, 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 it, it's I'm surprised that surprises me. Like, do you, are you not a fan of like uh, like uh, westerns and stuff like that? No, see, I am. But in the Star Wars story, when I think western, I want more so like the dawn of the original old order, right? Like I want to see dark. You, revenue, you want you want macro. You want macro because the main no no no. Because no, also, let me just say this: if they do a micro story in that time period, because they've always talked about doing something in that time period, the Knights of the Old Republic. That I'm okay with a micro story in that. It never has to go connect back to us. They never have to do another thing in the Knights of the Old Republic canon ever again. I just want to see a story from back then because between the Night of the Old Republic games, all those cinematics, there is enough of a fucking story for a series, even if it's animated. So, <laughs> so the, the last thing I'll say on this is just when I, I want to clarify what I mean by micro and macro, right? Micro is macro is what a story. Micro is. A uh, macro is the story of the wider universe. This of, of the story of like what the overarching plot and how things are happening like everywhere. Um, micro is what is happening in this little piece of this world. What is going on here? I like micro micro plot plots because I if I like the macro or I like the vibe of a, of a world or, or an IP, I want to see more experiences within that world. I want to see more things. So what I mean by that is, is um, let's take a, like th there's a reason why I enjoyed season three of Castlevania as much as I did. I wanted to see, people living within this world i wanted to see the goings on yes i like the big overarching story suspense great but also I, and just as much i like seeing people exist and deal with the day-to-day -day things going on in a in a b or c you well know? that's why then i think andor is the perfect example of the micro uh dissection of a story that you're describing because Andor goes above and beyond in creating not only a gritty vibe, but it also stays firmly on the one or two characters that Andor, you know, circulates around. Don't get me wrong, they include other people, obviously, because they have to, because that's the fucking story going. But I do, uh, if, to your credit, I'm saying Andor does that perfectly. Boba Fett, uh, and yeah, I think personally... Fair. I, I think personally, it's just the source material. In all honesty, it's more interesting to see Andor, uh, to see, uh, what's his name? Uh, the guy we've, from Andor. We've seen Tatooine already. Tatooine was yeah. the first thing we saw 20, 30, 40 fucking years ago. We and went, that's like, what I'm saying. You know what? That's and, exactly and, what I'm and, saying. And, what I'm and, saying. And, and, and in that notion, if it was on a different planet that we hadn't seen before, I feel like you would have liked Boca Boba Fett a lot more. But the fact that it's on Tatooine and it is already something familiar, it's not. And it's not. It doesn't get you with that. It doesn't get you with the hook. I get that. But on that note, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you so much for watching the rundown. I appreciate you, your time, and your listenership, as does my co-host, Mister Brian. No dot to Ortega, who can be found on Instagram at uh at um uh no dot two un underscore, underscore Brian. Brian. I keep fucking mixing. I keep mixing up it's Shane, Shane's fucking ads all the time because it's it's Sheen ninety nine, and I'm like it's no dot two underscore Brian, and it's the underscores that get me fucked up. Um, okay. If you want, uh, uh, we'll see. By the time the next episode happens, the first episode of Brian's new podcast should be live, so we'll be pushing that. Um, thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate you. Uh, so, uh, if you want to support the show, please consider doing so 
at himedia.gg slash tip. A dollar a month sub is a boon to my mental health. And with it, you get a bunch of like extra free content. I'm also going to be doing a uh, playing a game that my friend Chara gave me called Shower With Your Father Simulator 2015 so I can get out of having to play Getting Over with Bennett Foddy to completion on stream. So if you want to see that playthrough, which is definitely not going to be fucking allowed on YouTube, I will. I will you can see that there. I'm also thinking about doing some music reviews. I might end up doing the, asking to do those with you, Brian, and we can like just sit, go through an album and do some reactions and some thought pieces on them. And then that will be exclusive content. So that's another thing. I'm planning on ramping up the exclusive content mail on the Discord, please. It, but every video that I put out on YouTube, almost every video I put out on YouTube and in landscape mode is published there first. So you go check that out. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you and your time and your relationship. And we'll see you guys next time. Love you.